Welcome and salutations. This is the first video of the That OS 64 or Operating System Development Series. And let's get started. First, let's do the setup. Now, what I've already done here is I have actually set this up with a basic foundation of code. So just go in here, download the zip file, or you can do it this way if you want to. And basically, uh, we, you I'm, this is, again, the initial setup, first YouTube video. You can just click here. You can actually see the actual code itself. And all it is is just a make file, bat file, and a mount file. Okay, so make sure that you have, uh, I don't have it listed here. I should probably list that. But what I use, let's go here. I use OSF mount. This is, on, no, keep in mind, this whole series is on Windows. There is, um, you will be able to also compile and do everything with the Mac and Linux as well. And in fact, I actually need to update this with the links to the description on how to do that. I don't have that here, actually. You will need, yeah. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll work on that. I'll, I'll add that shortly. Anyhow, grab and download this and install that and... Um, you might need to make sure it's in the path. So yeah, just make sure it's in your Windows path. Um, all right, so what else do we need? Uh, okay, so back here. Now you will need to grab from here uh, in this, in the tuts. And I have already created this for you, this right here. This is what you need. That EFI, it's already created. You don't need to compile it. Later on, um, we might need to compile a specific version of this using the code from this series. But for now, you could just grab this so you don't have to worry about it. So what I'll go ahead and do is just download the zip. That way you can see how it's done. The other thing we're going to need is my CLEB. And this is um, a work in progress. We have a lot of work here to do. So you just go here, download the zip. And let me share how to install that. So, uh, whoops, I already have it open. There we go. So as far as the touch is concerned, just go in here and drag that out. That's it. We don't need the rest of it. Okay, so drag that in here. As far as this is concerned, just drag this out, close that, click on this, and just rename it. There. And drag it in here. And if all should be go good, also too, you will you can use either QEMU, which you know you just hello work with me here, Q E there we go. Uh, you could use the QEMU version for Windows. Now keep in mind, uh, some have reported that there are issues with uh, the two, uh, 2021 version. I have ran into that issue. So what I've done is I've used the latest 2020 version in this directory and scrolling, let's see, where is it? I think it's this one. This is the one I'm using. All right, this is the latest of the 2021 or 2020 version. That's the one that works for me. So if you run into a problem where QMU on Windows does not work with the latest 2021 version, um, yeah. So now you can see how that works, all right? So I have QMU installed, even though it's not really being used um, for now. Uh, let's see, virtual box. There we go. And for virtual box users, you just go here. I'll make sure that in the description of, the, of my here, inside that repository, I'll make sure to add that here. So I'll have that in there. But anyways, you'll download, install VirtualBox as usual. And when you go to install VirtualBox, some of you already know from my previous videos, um, the so, couple things you'll need to do. System is you will need to enable EFI. You'll also need to set up the storage to load from the drive.hdd file. All right, so if you need to know how to do that, you can go to my YouTube channel and I will have 
that particular video listed on how to do that. So go to the playlist, you go to here, and hey make sure that doesn't play. And in fact, here we go. We have Mac and Linux users. This is actually accurate. You can actually use these two videos. Same thing with this. You're gonna to wanna to know about the command line and you, you'll be able to go from there. Um, you might also want to look this up just in case this, these first four videos might be uh, useful to you. I don't think I've got anything else here that needs to be looked at. Yeah, I don't. Okay, so there we go on that. Let's see, what else? Um, I can't think of anything else at this time. We've got all that in there now. So let's go ahead and minimize this, refresh. And now um, the code. Now, the code, right now, I found a problem with this as far as this is concerned, so just leave this commented out. And what I've done is forward declared the one function that I need and then added it here. This will be solved be, uh, in the near, very near future, uh, because we're going to be getting into libraries and how to actually call and use that as a library. But for now, this works. So, um, this is the setup. I was going to explain that uh, this on this video, but I think we're gonna leave that to the next video. So for now, let's just make sure this compiles and works. And, uh, oh, a couple of little things you will need to know. This is different, this is set up this way now, and we are now use, utilizing that the way we're supposed to. The make file, same difference. If you were to open it in here, you'll notice that we now have added that here and this is kind of cleaned up a little bit. Uh, make it easier to see. There you go. Um, also too, I've removed, because we don't want to delete the EFI file. We're gonna be copying from it while we're testing. Okay, so I had to remove that from here when we go to clean. Uh, let's see what else. I, I've removed a couple of lines, but everything else is pretty much the same as the UEFI series. So that takes care of that. Mounting the drive. Notice that we now have this folder that you need to create. So to take a look at that, and by the way, in the UEFI series, I explain how you can create this file right there and how you set that up. So make sure you pay attention and look at that because that's actually part of the UEFI series. Uh, that's within the first four videos. So that's uh, pretty much needed. Or you could just use that file directly off my UEFI series. You could just do it that way too. So mount, we do a read only. And the only reason I'm showing you this is so that you know that what you're going to be creating, once this figures out what it wants to do with itself, go here, there it is. You're going to be creating that folder. Now, right now, the way that you'll see things it'll be empty, but you should create that, all right? And if you are missing this, uh, go ahead and create the EFI and the boot and look at the capitalization. It matters. So don't do everything in lowercase or uppercase. Pay attention to the capitalization. All right, so that takes care of that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and empty this before I close that. There we go. And we won't be using this GUI interface very often. Uh, we're going to actually be using uh, this bat file, but you can, you know, you can use the interface if you really want to. Uh, let's see, what else? I think that's it. So we load the loader.bin file into that folder, and of course we load our EFI. And notice we're using copy and we're using move, depending on which file that we're dealing with. So pay attention to those and you're good to go. All right, so open this back up. Yeah, of course, I already closed that. So we go here and to the source code. And uh, yeah, that's everything that we need. So let's compile, make sure that works. And mount, make sure that works. And of course, something, something screwed up. Not sure what that was. Not sure what the deal is. Uh, there it goes. See that? Microsoft Windows, you gotta love it. So I just had to wait, is what it was. There we go. Sometimes you just have to be patient. All right, so that takes care of that. Um, and that was most likely due to the fact that I had opened it with the GUI program. 
So just kind of ignore that. You'll get a pop-up, but because I'm doing this as a video, um, I disabled my UEAC, UAC, whatever it's called. It's security. So that's why that was popping up. Anyhow, um, okay, so we get a successful number back. That's what it's supposed to do. And basically what it is is we're getting a number from the UEFI, 3456. So in the loader, that's what we're seeing here. We're looking at 3456, and then it gets into this mess here, which is loading this kind of info here based off of this function here. And so here we are. We're, that means that we're actually getting this number back like we're supposed to. Okay, um, like that, there we go. So that's done. I can't think of anything else that we needed to share. Um, again, we'll get into this on the next video because this is all about the ABI, the Application Binary Interface. So that's where we're gonna get into this info here. And, and technically, it's also about how you interface with your libraries too. So we're definitely gonna to have to have a library interface or ABI interface discussion, and that will most likely be in the next video. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, welcome to the first tutorial for the operating system. Cheers.